we would never well. use ragu. Italians would not do that. Lee. We're on live streaming now. Stop fighting. Patty, you used to say <laughs> Christians are supposed to get along. It's very <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Peace, it's gravy. <laughs> it is not gravy. Hey, Katie, you're overdue for inviting me for dinner. Okay. Stacey, is Jake in the kingdom? No, Father, not yet. Can I make you pasta with ragu? Henry, gravy. turn the TV gravy. off. Gravy. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Want some gravy? <laughs> Why do they call it spaghetti sauce? Spaghetti? They don't call it spaghetti Without gravy. Meat. They call it spaghetti right. sauce. It's Without you know, meat. That's when you're an American. You better get your Italian correct. We were supposed. We were supposed. <laughs> you know, it's tuta, tuta, tuta. Tuta, tuta, tuta. It doesn't matter I how many could, times you say tuta, tuta, tuta. It's this. gravy. I can see Marie like and Larry like Lucy McGillicuddy. <laughs> Walking around going, yen, da, 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 you know, sister Eileen, you cannot play the fifth on Judgment Day now. Uh oh, here you go, Eileen. You see what's happening now? Oh my goodness. Hi, Eileen. <laughs> Miss Eileen. I'm going to start driving her. Eileen crazy. <laughs> I want to see. Is it so, oh, so we gotta go into. We gotta give you the reasons for prophesying, and then, then I'm gonna take you it through Armageddon. Sauce and gravy. That's what we gotta figure out. Sauce and gravy. That's right. You got it. Yes. <laughs> Google it. Any questions? <laughs> Any answers? Any answers? Lillian, it's about time you showed up. Everybody you know, knows now. You know, Everybody Marie, knows. Do you know Marie uses ragu sauce? Never. Never, 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 oh, never. I don't believe that. I wouldn't believe it for a moment. So now you know what? Thank Lillian, you, ladies. Lillian, Thank you, ladies. she wasn't feeling well. I wanted to come over and cook for her. Yeah. No. And she refused yes. my great cooking. <laughs> Never. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I am a better cook than all of you. No, <laughs> right. Okay. You wish. I don't know about that. Wish. Amen. He goes to the dining room, Father. And I will Father. even tell you how to stop Thank your Jeep. You. Thank you. Father Bell, there's a, there's a guy named Vit Vitello you, from a restaurant in Brooklyn. <laughs> he says, linguistically, sauce is a more accurate term coming from the Italian word Salsa meaning a topping. Of course. Rest my case. It's gravy. It's no, gravy. It's it's gravy. It says it here no, in it's Google. Gravy. Google. It's gravy. Katie, are you I don't really care. He's Very not the good Italian. Chris Ariana. He's not the apologist. No, he's not. We use sauce. Okay. I'm in trouble now, Father Bill. Yes, you're you in big trouble. Right. You're out <laughs> not good. You're, You're a jeep. Outnumbered. Men are outnumbered by the women. Stay out of it. Uh oh. <laughs> the swords are coming out, Father. Save me. Stay oh, out praise of God. It. New Jersey just had the governor open all the doors today. Oh, my God. You don't have to stay at home in New Jersey. You can go out. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are. Good witch. Good witch. No, I'm a sandwich. First sandwich. Oh. Andy and Lee, please switch places because I'm used to seeing you on the other. <laughs> Seven thirty-one. You're a minute late. Oh, there's Patty and Lee. Do you have Sorry. to still wear masks? Hi, Patty. Please. Father, get a hold of yourself. They want Bible study. Uh oh. Natalie has uh -oh. spoken, Father. Uh oh. Go rapido, Father. Oh. Rapido. I think no. we can wait a few more. Wonder he has uh, white hair. All right. What is your name? Uh, Newton or? Yes, Father. 
Nolan, whatever the heck your name is. Today's Newton. Today's Newton. I want you to lock Marie up. <laughs> oh, not there. She left. He went to get the sauce. <laughs> lock Marie up so that she can Wrong. Wrong. Silence, everybody, Newton. Ready? Go. It's waiting. You two minutes. It's late. It's seven thirty. Michael, I want you to pay attention. Where is your Bible in your hand? <laughs> oh, courage. Where's Tony? He is with the guy that's putting in more cameras in the house. Or help us. Yeah. Michael, where's your Bible? He said, where's your Bible? Okay, praise Jesus. Everybody open to Daniel 9. We're there. Now, you need to quiet Marie right away. Amen. Amen. Now, sister, what is your name? Eileen suggested that because you're not getting all the points down, that I repeat the point. Is that what you want? That I repeat, oh, Peggy, that you repeat the point and then you repeat it again. Yeah. Right, uh, amen. Now, Sister Marie, even when she doesn't talk, she talks. She's an amazing Italian. Um, and um, by the way, I need to collect $2 million because Marie destroyed every one of my CDs. So now everybody turn to Daniel 9. We're going to do the 70th week. You know, the people who want the volume turned up, they got to put up their hearing aids. All right, now, you should have signs in front of you. Slow, repeat, and good stuff. Slow. And praise Jesus above all. Amen. Amen. Okay, there. Everybody got all your signs in front of you? And the fourth one, I wouldn't want to be Marie on Judgment Day. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, we thank you for this time, and I thank you for the freedom. Everything's opening up now, finally, and amen. But may we be open up to the sacred scriptures that give us life and that breathe on us the hope and the power of all that is Jesus. Take us through the 70th week of this prophecy in Daniel. And so may we see it's, it's worth, may we see its power. May we be prepared, 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 because that's the word we're hearing today. So bless this word to our hearts. May we enjoy Daniel, grace us with wisdom, and number two, understanding. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. If you're following me in your notes that you can't read, um, I'm in, I'm on page 51. Okay, page 51. Okay, everybody got page 51? Now, what page are we on, Jackie? Now, everybody, uh, seven, I'm on page 747. Now, you can see why the Protestants all use the same Bible, so they can tell you what page they're on. Amen? 747? So now, um, if you go with me to verse 24, uh, uh, Daniel 9:24. 70 weeks are decreed from concerning your people in the holy city. 
Now, 70 weeks represent what? What does a week represent? Seven years. This is where we get 70 times seven. Okay. And then concerning your people in the holy city, what's the holy city? Yerushalayim. Everybody say Yerushalayim. To finish the transgression. What's the transgression? Because the Jews have done what? They've fallen away and went into idolatry. Now, you can see in the book I told you about 1,000 times. In the book of the end of the world for the Jews is Leviticus. And in Leviticus 26, remember I, I showed you that about a million times. In Leviticus 26, verse number 40. 2640. This is how the Jewish people have to find Christ. Amen. Now, I got to tell you, scarily, on the world stage, they're forming right before our eyes a one world religion. And it's scary because I always grew up believing Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And guess what, saints? I still do. There's no other way but Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our church people are not that bold. So if I get thrown over the George Washington tonight, I will still believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Now look at verse 40, 26, 49. You should all have that underlined. Is that underlined your Bible, sister? No. Now, in 26, 40, it says to us, if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of the fathers in their treachery, which they committed against me, also in walking contrary to me. When I walked contrary to them and brought them into the land of their enemies, what was that? Babylon. If their uncircumcised heart is humbled and they make amends for their iniquity, then I will remember my covenant with Yaakov and I remember my covenants with Yitzhak and my covenant with Avram and I remember the land. So right there, the Jewish people have that in their third book of the Bible. Now, I told you over and over again, if you're talking to Jewish people, Leviticus 26 is the Jewish understanding of eschatology. And that is the study of the end of the world. Now, our chapters of eschatology, the biggest one is probably Matthew 24. Then we're going to have Mark 13 and Luke 17 and 21. 13. So that's our understanding of the end of the world. I just want to show you the Jewish understanding. Does everybody see it? Mm. Now, can I summarize those verses of Leviticus? Super simple for you. Yeah. Simple, she says. Very simple. What do the Jews going to have to do to find Jesus? Mm right all is very simple they're gonna have to say we missed him right we, we've already studied that last week they missed the hour of visitation how do you say that sister marie in hebrew the fakad p-u-p 
P-A-Q-A-D, the Pakad. They missed their visitation. How many there are going to miss your visitation? Don't miss your visitation. Today is the day of your salvation. Okay. This is just review. All right, back to Daniel 9. Did you like that review? Okay. To put an end to sin, I'm in verse 24. And to atone for iniquity. Atone means to make up for. Now, of course, the all atonement goes to the cross. What does it mean for a Jew to make up? They have to spend, because of Jeremiah's prophecy, 70 years in exile. It began in, review, 605 B.C. It's going to go to 535 B.C. Then there's a man that's going to come along. His name is going to be Cyrus. How many ever heard of the word Cyrus? Okay. And to atone for iniquity, to bring into everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and prophet. So now Daniel's going to get a seal. And to anoint a most holy place. Where's the holy place going to be? Jerusalem, Mount Zion. Now, in case you want to know where Mount Zion is, many of you have been with me. Where was it? Where Jesus did the Eucharist? Where Jesus did the Eucharist, to, um, the, the resurrection appearance, where the Holy Spirit fell. Do you remember that spot? Do you remember Mount Zion? Now, I got to take you all back because I have to have you go to Mount Zion and we got to go to the center of Mount Zion and you're going to walk all the way downstairs and you're going to see the most incredible things you've ever seen the original city of david when you come to the bottom you will see the gihon springs where solomon got on his donkey then if you make a right outside you will see the pool of siloam Somebody say, hmm. Then it says, verse 25, this is just review. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth to the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of the anointed one. Who's the anointed one, everybody? Jesus. Jesus. Now, it's very interesting because if you ask a Jewish person, how come you didn't get it? When the Jewish people look at this today, they're like, they are dumbfounded by this word in their own Bible. Scarily, they don't want to admit it's Jesus. Amen? Now, it's going to be a prince. How do you say prince in Hebrew? Sar. S-A-R. And um, then uh, there shall be seven weeks. So now, what week are we on? How many, how many days in each week? Seven. Okay. So there'll be seven weeks. And after the 62 weeks, an anointed one shall be cut off. So in 62 weeks from there, we will find out there's the crucifixion. Ever see the cut off? Mm -hmm. And shall have nothing. And the people, the prince who is to come, shall destroy the city. The city was destroyed of all years, 70 A.D. Ninth, 10th of August. Then um, the sanctuary, its end shall come with a flood. Now, it's not a literal flood. It's a flood of armies. In 66 AD, the Romans attacked. As soon as the temple was finished in 66 AD, 
the Romans attacked, surrounded the city for three and a half years. So in came the flood. At the end of the, the siege, 1.1 million Jews died through crucifixion. They got all their wood in from the Garden of Gethsemane and that whole surrounding area. That's why when you went there and you looked at it, there wasn't as many trees as would have been there in the original. So far so good? To the end there shall be war. There's, there's the continue, continuity of war. And shall come with a flood to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. That's just a review. And verse 27 is new material. And verse 27. And he shall make a strong covenant with many for one week. All right, who is the he? The Antichrist. Now, the seven years is the what? Tribulation. We're going to see seven years of tribulation. The Antichrist is probably alive right now. The Antichrist is spoken of in 2 Thessalonians 2. Now, he's going to come across as a world leader. This September, all the religions of the world are meeting to make it one. Guess who's participating? We cannot have one world religion. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. At this moment, Protestants believe that the rapture has got to come momentarily. Because they believe we cannot participate in this. So... What am I doing? I'm looking up all the time. There's a one world government coming and a one world religion. Because religion has killed a gazillion people. But what is going to boil down to in our times is Islam versus Christianity. And it's very dangerous with this Pakamama, with this all talk. It's so many ways to God. How many have ever heard that? If you lived in Canada, you are no longer allowed in Canada to get anybody therapy for deviant sexuality. It is a crime now. If you live in Canada, if I were to preach, God made them male and female from Genesis, I could be arrested. In Canada. Amen. Oh, Canada. So, did you know in Canada, they also shut down religious broadcasting? They don't want to preach it anymore. But, uh, but hopefully, uh, sh don't tell anybody, I'm going to sneak into Canada. Okay? And then run out real quick. 
So I'll get on my United flight. And you know, the last time I did it, I got on United flight out of all places. Where did the plane change planes? I, I came into Vancouver, into San Francisco. I said, this is joyful, Lord. Thank you for taking me into San Francisco. Where I left my heart. Then he says to us there, now watch this. Are, are you getting this? Everybody following so far? Yeah. So we're going to have the one week. Underline that verse 27. <coughs> a strong covenant with many for one week. And a half of the week he shall cause sacrifice and offering to cease. It means that the Jews who believe in the temple and the sacrifice can no longer do any more sacrifices. But for a Catholic view, it means they're going to try to do everything they can to stop you from going to church. The holy sacrifice of the mass. I think right now they're doing a good job. Wow. Anybody like going to church? You know, Donald sits there at the 1030 and everything else. He kibitzes in the back. And Lillian looks pretty and everything else. But they're trying to stop you from going to church. How many have interesting people living with you? And you say you're going to Bible? Again? And then they say to you, stay home. Then you go stay home. And you got to watch I Love Lucy reruns. Yes, if the week is three and a half years, you got it, sister. So when the Antichrist is in for three and a half years, Daniel 7, when he's in there, all hell is going to break loose. Then he says to us there, so put a little note there. there. There is a plot of evil from Catholic understanding to destroy the mass. Now, how many have ever seen the mass, quote unquote, evolve? And strange things have happened during church. We need holy reverence again. Without reverence, we are not wise. And upon the wing of abomination, remember we told you the wing of abomination is to desecrate the altar. Mm -hmm. To have a desecrated altar means you have things on it. When you go into a church, a Catholic church, there should be Nothing on it. Because it represents what? Calvary. How many have seen a lot of things on it? Then he says there, shall come one who makes desolation. This is the desolation, abomination of what? Desolation. Jesus mentions that, I told you time and again, Matthew 24. What is the abomination of desolation? The abomination of desolation was when the first Antichrist appeared. Antiochus IV Epiphanes. He, he took a pig, slid it, and threw pig blood all over the place. Now, what's going to happen to our churches? In the United States right now, we just lost 100 Catholic schools because of this COVID stuff. They don't plan to open ever. Amen? Until the decree end is poured out on the desolator. So now, when the Antichrist appears, 
for us in our time. He's going to have an combination of two people. He's going to have the combination of Alexander the Great, which when he conquers, he does it very what? Quickly. So we're going to see some quick bad action. Secondly, the Antichrist spoken of is going to do another terrible thing. He's going to have the cruelty of Antiochus the Fourth Epiphanes. It's going to start out okay. Then all of a sudden, you're going to wake up one day and you're going to find out we wanted this guy and now we can't get rid of him. So in the seven signs I gave you, this is called, the seven weeks is called, when you read Matthew 24, this is called the Great Tribulation. Does everybody understand that? I hope, I pray, I'm not around. But as the clock ticks and the world governments and world religions are meeting this September, I say, oh dear, oh dear. So everybody get a Father Bill Cave ready. Amen. So this is called the Great Tribulation. So the prince shall come, the little horn shall come. Daniel chapter 7. I'm on page 51. The Jews will be eating out of his hand. That's that line. Beginning with the temple sacrifices. I'm on page 51. The midst of the week will be three and a half years. See the midst of the week there? See where I have verse 27? Will be three and a half years. He will cause all the worship to stop. So people, guess what? This is a precursor to stop you from going to church for three months. Interesting. Three months. And now I heard the governor say, I'm going to go vote next year to get rid of them. The governor says, if you don't have to go to church, don't. He said he only wants 25 people or less, but he'll allow up to 50. And the ridiculous ways they're putting on you to receive. Now, what's going to happen there is he makes a covenant the Antichrist with the Jews. And what does he do? He tears up the agreement. See the tearing up of the agreement. I'm in verse 27. And then we see in the great tribulation, there's going to be war. And the book of Revelation, it tells us there'll be much human bloodshed. This is called in Judaism the time of Jacob's trouble. In Matthew 24, 15 to 22, Jesus talks about this very passage. So hold your spot with me. Are you going to get some food? She's all excited over here. Matthew I love it. I, just, I love when I open right to the page. Isn't that great? Matthew 24, 15 to 22. Matthew 24, 15 to 22. 
So when you see the desolating expense of it, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, standing in the holy place. Now, some people believe from a Catholic, interesting, mystical background that he will sit in St. Peter's Square. Now, in the holy place, let the reader understand. Now, how many know your whole life, you probably never got these verses explained to you? Then he says to us in verse 16, Matthew 24, 16. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. About 10 years ago, maybe longer, I was with a very holy priest. I haven't seen him in a long time. Out of the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. And he said he has a friend in the FBI. The man said to him, Father, do you have a house far away? He says, you need to have one because you're going to have to get away soon. Now, right here in verse 16, the time of Jesus, I told you, they studied Matthew 24 right here. Jesus preached this on the top of Mount Olivet in that cave we were all in. Do you remember that cave? Now, you might remember it because I think all of you were there. It was um, where the, our father was all over the place. So we went into the cave, and that's where Jesus preached it. Now, uh, what happens here is they heard Jesus preach this, and they decided to say, we better get out of here. That's why, Orlando, I'm looking at you, but I don't know. It seems too central. All right? And besides, some people say it's too hot. Now, look, look with me, verse number 20, 17, 16. Then those who are in Judea, at south of Jerusalem, we got advice for you. We got advice is flee to the mountains. Where did they go? Every Christian, everyone, everyone got out of town. They went to a place called Hella, P-E-L-L-A. That would be more what, southeast? Not one Christian was killed. 1.1 million Jews were slaughtered. Then they went up to a little mountain called Masada. If they did not survive, Judaism would not have survived today. They came out of Masada, and there's only there was about what twenty one people left. When they escaped. They formed what is called rabbinical teachings. That's how the Jews survive today. Jews are not biblical Jews because they can't kill animals. But when you go to a place called Samaria, they still kill animals. Now, there's three temples. One is in Jerusalem. One is in Samaria. And the other one is in, of all places, Egypt. Remember I told you the name of the one in Egypt, Elephantine. The Jews right now are waiting to build the third temple. They're waiting to build the third temple based on 
Ezekiel 44 to 48. When they talk about the third temple, about doors being open, so read that, that's Jewish eschatology. Interestingly, when Catholics study that, the interpretation you would be given is it's a heavenly place. So if you went to a Catholic Bible study, which are few and far between. You can't even find one in Alberta. Amen. So 44 to 48 is it must be heaven. Somebody saying, hmm. Let those who are in the Judea flee, verse 17, those in the housetop not go down and take what is in the house. We said we study that. And let him who is not in the field or turn back to get a coat. Just keep going. Get out. Get out. There are mystics saying, get out. Get out quick. It's, it's got to come. Amen. Now, look at verse 19. And unless for those who are with child, for those who are nursing in those days, it's going to be very difficult for you. Pray that your flight may not be in the uh, may not be in winter on the Shabbat. What's winter in Israel? Rain. What's the Sabbath? You got to keep it. So you would have to pause along the way. So now, do you, do you hear Jesus speaking to a Jewish audience how they're interpreting this? But verse come on, there will be underlined there. See the word great tribulation? See it, everybody? There it is, the great tribulation. So everybody put that there. And he says to us, from then there will be great tribulation, such as not been from the beginning of the world till now, and never will be. So this is the greatest tribulation in the entire world. Somebody say, whoa, this is the last week. This is the last week. And then, so how many know I don't want to be around? Amen. That's why I'm saying, come, Lord Jesus, come. Amen. And if those days had not been shortened, verse 22, no human would be saved because it's going to be terrible. Now, the evangelicals believe we're going to be raptured. And those of us alive are go going to have to go through, you think three days of lockup was enough? Three weeks, three months. But now, can you imagine three and a half years and all hell breaks loose? It's going to be mega. Amen. And so he says there, no human being, so God's going to save us because of the intensity of what will be happening. And he says to us there, for the sake of the elect, meaning those of us who are redeemed. So during this time, there will be people who will come into the kingdom. They'll have their eyes open and say, wow, this guy really deceived us. Then if anyone says, verse 23, behold, here is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it. Verse 24, false Christ, false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders. Now here's the scary part, which is happening right now. There's going to be a lot of magic, and you're going to see a lot of healings. But it's not going to be Jesus. That's why Jesus says many can cry out, Lord, Lord, and they will not necessarily be saved because they did miracles. You are not a holy person because you go around healing people. That is not one of the requirements. Do I hear amen? Wow. Then he says there to us, 
and so to lead astray, if possible, even the elect, if it did not come to be lessened, what would happen to all of us? How many have said at least once during these three months, I can't take this? Anybody? Did you, sister? Did you, sister? Did you, sister? I can't take this anymore. I got to get out. In fact, I took online flying lessons. <laughs> amen. Do I hear amen? amen. So that's the seven. The seven. Now, all of this must come to pass, at the bottom of page 51, called the second advent. The transgressions of the Jews has got to be ended. What are the Jewish people blinded to really be seeing? The rebellion is coming. Second Thessalonians 2 says that we're going to have to experience the apostasy first and then the antichrist comes. Right now we are in the greatest defection of the church ever. If you turn the page, all Israel will be saved they will hear the message. Paul remembers this in the book of Romans, chapter 10. After 490 years, now remember we had a discussion. When did it start? Our best guess is it started in the prophet Nehemiah when a decree was ushered in. Now, there will be times coming of everlasting righteousness. We believe which you haven't been taught, which I am annoyed as all can be. We believe in the thousand year reign. How many ever heard of a thousand year reign growing up? Miss Katie heard of it. Nobody else? Lisa heard of it. Michael, did you ever hear of it? Now, the thousand year reign, by Protestants, their interpretation, it's going to be a literal time. That's a long time. During the time, both Catholics and Protestants agree. And by St. Augustine, the Catholic Church believes it's a long period of time. That's what the thousand means. In Revelation 20, 1 to 4. So that's the millennium in place. Now during this time, I wouldn't mind living during that time. We are going to go to church. You will go to church and you go toot the toot the sister. When you go to church, you will have unbelievable visions of what's going on in there. You will come out of church seeing visions of Jesus and Mary and all the saints. How many would like to go to church and have that kind of vision? When you go into a church, there's going to be such a release of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we become as believers have always been meant to be. That means of all the Bible studies you have studied, everything will be infused upon you like that. You will live for the glory of God. Now, when you go to church during the millennium, guess what will happen? 
Do you want to leave? No. You think you have problems now and saying, where are you, in church again? By the way, you won't want to leave church. See, Vincent, I don't know if Sister Linda Kuntz ever told you the story in North Dakota where this happened. They went to church in a Catholic church in North Dakota. An amazing thing of the Holy Spirit happened. The whole church went out in the spirit. They came to themselves two hours later. It made the headlines there. Tell her to tell you that story. It's amazing. How many would like to go to Our Lady of Fatima in Piscataway and have that happen to you? And knock Marie out for 25 hours. Gone. How many would like now during the millennium, it'll be a time that you will be the person you were always meant to to be because right now when we go to church it's not the way it should be because i look at donald in the back i said oh save us it's going to be alive and by the way you know it's going to happen during the millennium jesus will have shown you he conquered everything now, during the millennium, during the millennium, you will be the person you meant to be. Will everybody come on board? No. Satan will be chained up, Revelation 20, so that there will there'll be the greatest outpouring of the Spirit. Many conversions, everyone, no. No. During each and every age we live in, there's going to be a lot of rejections. But we, right now, the Holy Spirit's giving me a word. Here's the word he says to me. My son, work on one person at a time. Today was helping the poor mothers who needed pampers and I was working one person at a time. And so they promised to pray for me. So I got what I wanted. So now the thousand, how, can, how many can't wait to the thousand year reign? You could read about that. Revelation 20, one, two, three, and four. Amen? Do I hear amen? Now, the most holy place will be anointed. And Ezekiel 45 is a reference to the description of the temple. The Jews have got to come back to Jesus. The Jews... Uh, have got to get out of their unbelief. I have there for us one, two, three. Uh, I have a couple years. So let's explain what's going to happen when prophecy starts to come to an end. Amen. Are you getting good stuff? Okay, now, number one, the end of prophecy, which ends. For Daniel here. We're going to see, number one, the perpetuity of God's people. Sometimes you might figure, has God forgotten me? He can't forget you. If he made you, he can't forget you. The Jews are here to stay. May I recommend for us a love of your Jewish friends? Don't convert to Judaism. No, I'll come after you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. 
Now, the Jews are not going to be assimilated into the culture. They are going to be themselves. In Deuteronomy 32, I told you many times, Moses says they will make it to the end of time. Number two, when Daniel has this prophecy ended, we can see the purpose of captivity. It was to, to take care of the 70 years that they violated the Sabbath. You were supposed to keep holy the Lord's day. Do you think we have a holy Sabbath? Like Donald can go home and get a good Italian dinner from Lillian. Do you think they just rest or they go about? Do you rest on the Lord's day? So they did not. So if God doesn't get it from us, he will what? That's what I have there. If they were supposed to set aside time. Every seven years, they weren't supposed to do what? They were supposed to let their crops to save the land. They didn't. So God, guess what God did? He took it from them. So this was the 490 years into the future. The 490 years for us is the past. The 70 years are the exile. And then we now look to these seven weeks for the future. During the 70 years, the Jews were idolaters. They, they dreamed, but they did not get. What is Daniel hearing? The end of their what? Captivity. Now, interestingly, put a big star at the end. The Jews, the Jews never, page 52, the Jews never, 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 never after this went back into idolatry. I'm on page 52. Are you getting good stuff? Am I going too fast? She says, I'm going, Donald, am I going too fast? Donald says, no. Donald is my equilibrium out there. Now, the synagogue was born, I told you many times, in exile. In, the, in their exile, during the time of Ezekiel, they sang praises, they read scriptures, and for the first time, they got homilies. And by the way, they were called back then homilies. Does anyone like homilies? This is the basis of giving preaching in the church. What else happened during this time at the, as the prophecy of Daniel ends? Transition into the New Testament. See, the Old Testament canon of the Bible is under the leadership of the second Moses called what? Ezra. Ezra is the one who collected the scrolls of the Bible. Somebody say, hmm. This is when it first started the Bible. Somebody say, hmm. Then they knew one name, the name of YHWH. Does anybody remember that name? Name above all names. It was only, only uh, uh, Yahweh, the Lord, became clearly final, became near to them when they honored the name. No, you're not supposed to say the name. It, it can only be written once, 
And then you got to throw away the pen. <laughs> the Lord now walks among his people. Okay. Now, in Acts 15, 21... The Bible began to be read in the synagogue every day. How many have a little missalette, a little book that you have all the readings every day? Yeah. Miss Jackie gave me in December for Christmas. Thank you, Miss Jackie. Uh, a book where I can check out all the readings every day. Mm -hmm. Now, here it means when the Bible's being read, God personally is involved with the prophet and his people. Now, when we look at Daniel, if you just go back to Daniel 8, which we will, we will do. In Daniel 8, 18 and 19, he said, God touched me and he gave me. He touched me. How many would like to be touched by the Almighty? In chapter 9, 22, which we read, he sent a person called Gabriel. And what did Gabriel do? Touched him. When we go to chapter 10 now, 10, 10, 10 and 11, what is he going to say? He touched me. So now we have personal contact with God. In 1016, it says he touched my lips. In 1018, it says he touched me and strengthened me. This is the moment of the breakthrough where God is not distant. He wants to be up close and personal. I don't know why he does it the way he does it, but he wants to come down and he touched him. Now, every time you get a touch from God, you are being strengthened. So now when we go to chapter 10, Daniel 10, we're going to go back to eight. This is Daniel's fourth vision now during this time there's going to be problems what's going on he says how many of us said what's going on second there's a problem in heaven because the angels are fighting again now we're going to see two angels make an appearance. You already saw one called who? Gabriel. Then you're going to see Michael making an appearance. Now, can I ask you a question? How many people here have ever heard a full teaching in your life on Michael? I was preaching at a conference down in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And I decided that I'm going to give a talk only on Michael. And everybody loved it. So now let's get the background to chapter 10. Are you getting good stuff? So now we're going to go into his last vision. No. Is this good stuff, sister? I'm on the, uh, the next page. Daniel and the demons. Turn the next page, sister. Daniel and the demons. Now, you don't have page, 
You're done? We're going up to page, the next page would be 53. Didn't come with it. Now there's a conflict in the prophet. It's a separate chapter 10 uh, of the PDF. Another, another PDF. Another PDF. All right, send it to them. They should have it, Father. Now, um, we have 99%, it stops at 100 or it keeps going? Father, the YouTube live, people can join there too. Okay, so they can keep joining in, okay. Yeah. Um, there's a conflict going on the prophet. Right now, this is during the time of, everybody look at who, who is the king. Uh, in, the, in the third year, King Cyrus of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belshazzar. Now remember, when we look at these visions, they are not in chronological order. So all of a sudden we're down and then we're gonna go shoot back up, okay? This is during the time of Cyrus. Now Cyrus comes in at the ripe old age of 535 BC. So this is the end of the Jewish exile. Now I've been telling you many, many, many times if you look at Isaiah 45, verse 1. Isaiah 45, verse 1. He is called the Mashiach. That is Cyrus. God is going to get rid of all, remember all the kingdoms? Yeah. Now this is the second kingdoms, the Medes and the Persians. What happens is the Persians absorb the Medes. This is where we have the three, three kings of Ore and Ar. So there was what is called an edict of Cyrus. And he said, go back to Yerushalayim. Start rebuilding the temple. The time had pointed for the great conflict to come. Now, what's going to be the great conflict? When angelic appearances come, you will see a lot of angels coming. So look at verse two there. So it says there in verse one, Daniel 10, and the word was true and it was a great conflict and he understood the word and had understanding the vision. Verse two, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. Now this is where we get the Daniel fast. He says there, I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks because of the conflict that he sees. There was a time appointed and he starts crying over what's going on. Welcome to today. He felt very much alone in Babylon. Welcome to today. Now, interestingly, we have the following facts. Under 50,000 people went to return to Jerusalem. When you've been living somewhere 70 years in Port Monmouth, and God says to you, move, you're not going to move. So there was apathy of the Jewish people, and that was Daniel's burden. Nobody really wanted to go to build the temple. Ezra 3 says, it took two years for the foundation of the temple to be completed. Do you remember in 1 Corinthians 3, 11, Paul says that Jesus Christ is the foundation. 
Do you know where that comes from now? Now, that's a long time to build a foundation, isn't it? In Ezra 4, there were renegade Jews attacking those who wanted to build the wall. They tried to discourage one another. Going too fast, sister? All right. Uh, Ezra 3. It took two years. For the foundation. No, he and Eileen's asking about Nehemiah. No, Nehemiah comes right after this. Nehemiah comes right after this. Now in Ezra 4. They had some of their own Jews attack them. Can I say something to you? We have our own people who are trying to discourage us. Please, for the rest of your life, don't allow people to get you discouraged. That's not from God. How many would like to see your depression end? To end your depression, you must go on the offense. You do not accept discouraging words. So two years were already lost. They tried to get to the leadership and say, don't build. Don't build it. The one who came after the king, what was his name? Cyrus. Now, who's the king that came after him in history? No, Nebuchadnezzar's God. This is 535. Who came after him? I'll, I'll give you the word and I'll spell it for you. I'll, I'll spell it for you. Cambyses. Okay, if you have notes, you can see it on your, note, your sheet. C A M B S E S, Cambyses. C A M Cam, Cambyses, B S E S, Cambyses. Now he shut down the operations altogether. Then the Jews had another big problem. They needed some women folk. They had a lot of hootsies. The hootsie tootsies, baby. And so the Jews started marrying foreign women. Nehemiah is going to say at the end of Nehemiah, you need to repent for marrying foreign women. Because what do foreign women do? You marry their gods. Now remember, we just told you something. After this time period, the Jews never slipped into idolatry again. So there's the conflict that Daniel's seeing. He's seeing the change of the political scene. And guess what? St. Gabriel and Michael got a fight. The demon spirits of the nations. We are encountering demon spirits from every nation around. 
And on our streets, every night, there are demon spirits out there. And that's why we don't know how to fight demon spirits. Because how many people do you know is trained in spiritual warfare? So now, what is David going to do? Daniel, yeah. I got to fast for 21 days. This is called the Daniel fast. What's the Daniel fast? Three weeks of fruit and vegetables only. No pancakes with Vincent with syrup on that restaurant. No he keeps fries. taking me. No French fries, sister. No ice cream. No wet walnuts with whipped cream and a cherry on top. So now, if you want to do one of the most powerful fasts, If you want to do a very powerful fast, it's called the Daniel fast. You'll even see your two sons converted. Amen. He did not anoint his body. He had no after lotion. He went into the deep sorrows. Now, what are Catholics being asked to have Mary intercede for you? What are you asked to? You're supposed to ask for Our Lady of Sorrows intercession. And so what happened for three weeks? He wasn't really seen. He went into, like Elizabeth, after finding John's coming, she went into prayer seclusion. He's really upset with his fellow Jews. They did not learn his les their lessons. So look at chapter 10, verse number four. I was standing on the 24th day of the first month as I was standing on the bank of the great river. That is the Tigris. I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a man clothed in linen whose loins were belted with gold of Ufaz. Okay, so he has what? A vision, and who's the man again? Gabriel's back. How many times does Gabriel appear in the New Testament? Twice. Zechariah and Mary. How many times does he appear in the Old Testament? Twice. Once to Daniel, second to Daniel. I lived down, see where it says the Tigris River, so we know we're in Iraq. Now, when you pray, it's good to go down by the water. Page 53, go up. Okay, so we're on page 53 in your notes. Now, when you get a burden, you need to go straight to the source. Here's what he had to do. He has to set his face toward God. He has to have his intellectual resources toward God. He has to have his prayer toward God. This is the meaning of he has to set his face. He has to have verbal prayer. Pour out everything to God. Everything has to be directed toward heaven. He's directed the prayer that brought an angel down. So let's look quickly as we close. During the prayer that brought Gabriel back down. Now, guess what happened? She is bringing to us, is bringing to us 
Gabriel down. I lifted up my eyes, underline that verse number five. See the prayer? How many ever prayed lifting up your eyes? Whose loins are belted with the gold of Ufas. Now, when we go into heaven, as priests that all of you are, what's going to happen to you? You're going to wear the linen cloth of your priesthood. His body was like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning. Who saw the appearance of lightning? The book of Stephen in Acts 7. His face was like a glow when you lift your eyes up. Some people said St. John Paul II looked like that. His body like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches. Hello? Who does that look like? Revelation chapter 1, 12 to 16. When you looked at Jesus, his eyes were flaming torches. Okay. All right. You got your father's eyes. His eyes like flaming torches, his arms and his legs like the gleam of burnished bronze. And the sound of his words like the noise of a multitude. Psalm 29. So you can just hear the shaking of the words of God. So now he comes and five to nine, he's lifted up his eyes. He sees a man in linen, and what does he do? Pass out. Now, can this be Gabriel, or can this be Jesus? Because the similarities are Revelation 1, 10 to 16. If you look there, you could see the similarity. And what happened to verse 7? I'm just going to go down to verse 9 for tonight. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. Does that sound like Paul's conversion? Mm -hmm. Acts 9. Who were with me did not see the vision, but a great trembling fell upon them. Sounds like Paul in Revelation in Acts 9. Check your hand, yes. And no length was given me in my radiant appearance, but fearfully changed. I retain no strength. So what happens when you have no strength in you? You fall down. What happened to Paul? He fell down the same exact experience. Somebody say, well, this is good. And then I heard the sound of his words. Okay, now look at there again. I heard the sound of his words. And when I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face. You see, Vincent, the slain in the spirit, you go forward. So he went forward. See, slain in the spirit is. Now, when you read Revelation 1, you want to get good stuff, Vincent? Let me show you slain in the spirit. Is this good stuff? Go to Rev 1. Are you getting good stuff? All righty. We were pretty good tonight. Revelation chapter 1. Did you see where it fell? Verse 17. Revelation 1, go to verse 17. Now, that's why I always say, Vincent, are you paying attention? When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forever. And so what did he do? He fell in front of him on his face. Now, 
the great scholars, like I, I was, I think I was talking, talking about Scott Hahn once. And uh, to be slain in the spirit happened when in Gethsemane. Remember the soldiers, what do they do? Would they go backwards? They went forward. So when I see all these people going backwards, I'm like, don't get nervous. I don't correct them. I leave that to Vincent. So you should be going on a, because it's an adoration time. So we can see there, I, I put in your notes there, Revelation 1, Ezekiel 1. And now, why is he scared? Because the demon was coming after the Prince of Persia. He's trying to stop the Jews from gaining access to God. He says to us in Daniel 10, Daniel 10, verse 9. Then I heard the sound of his words, and when I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face. And now watch this. This is really, really good. This is called in Hebrew, a deep sleep. There it is again, the Tardama. Do you see it? Now, T A R D E M A H. The first Tardama was with Adam. The second Tardama was with Abram. The third, is this too fast? No. The third Tardama was Jonah. The fourth Tardama is Daniel. And then verse 10, and behold, dun, 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 he touched me. Stay tuned to find out what that touch is all about and how to get through the 21 days. Yes. Vincent, did you do anything new? Sister Ray, did you do anything new? Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the word of prophecy. We thank you that you have told us in clearest terms what we need to do. May we not be deceived because that would get us all very angry. May we know our faith. May we live our faith and give warning so that we will only go through the door that leads to you. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continue to come everybody with the power of the Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do you need notes, sister? No. So, so Sorry, any questions? Brother Vincent. So you talked about the uh, tribulation, and then you, you referenced the thousand years. Am I reading too much into this? I know you say you, you say we shouldn't read into the things too much, but are you saying it like for sure it's going to happen, or you're not sure, or, or what? No, it's absolutely going to happen. Okay. That's, um, that's already a written down. That's a written down.
thing that's absolutely going to happen. So we can look forward to that. That's good. Yes. And you better get out of Winter Haven right away. <laughs> Winter Park. Winter Garden. <laughs> Winter. Well, they just trained it to Haven. And Katie, you better get your kids ready. I am Father Bill. Was, is there any significance? So, like, for when they said, uh, when you see all these signs, um, you know, flee to the mountains. So, obviously, we can read the signs of the times, but yep. what would be the correlation for us? The correlation originally in Matthew 24 was that because they were heard Jesus preaching about Matthew 24, he said, when these things happen, get out of town. And they did. They went to a place called Pella. I'm telling you right now, the signs are right before you, in front of you. So where you now you're going to get you're going to get a shock when things start happening in September for the formation of one world religion. Get out of town. Where are we going go? we'll go to go? We'll go to Marie's hideaway down the shore. <laughs> Get the spaghetti sauce. What is this? So the one world. Uh, the, this meeting of all the religions, where can we read about that? It's all over the place. Do you pay attention, sister? <laughs> I try not to pay attention too much, Father. That's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> read about the papal meeting 2020 with world religions. Put it on your computer. Well, here's what I'll do. I'll go, take you to Phil's house. And he has a, uh, he has a safe down below and he has a three-year supply of food. <laughs> no, I just want you, when it starts happening, I want you to remember you've been told. And also, too, very soon, very soon, they're going to start to do away with cash. Yeah. Brother David, we're, we're, we're still going to have sovereign nations, though, with churches will, all over the world. But I, I, believe, so, I believe we need to have men and women who are solid with God. Right. You're going to see that less and less. So you take so, Catalina out right now, and uh, yeah. you find a place in La República Dominicana. <laughs> So, but, but just out of curiosity, prophetically, who's going to attack the church? Is it? Mm, we're attacking the church already. We are already being attacked, and our yes. leadership is silent as all could be. Yes. Yep. They're not. They're. They're not doing anything. No. Division. A lot of division. A lot of division. Yep. Hmm. And Father, what will we place cash? What will uh, the chip in your hand? Yeah, but we're not supposed to get that. That's correct. Then you run to Rosa's house and you hide in her basement with the cats. <laughs> now my Lord multiplies. I, I just, Carol, you missed good stuff, you know. I know, I missed it all tonight. Yeah, she did. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Doc, uh, Father Calloway had a lot to say to me. Good. Good stuff. Father Bill, uh, the governor of New Jersey announced that we can leave now uh, up to. All right, everybody, run under your house and go, yay. <laughs> people. We can meet up to 50 people. Or 200. Or 100. We can do it outside now. Amen. Sister Marie. Inside. Yeah, inside. Outside. Not listening. Inside. And then there's Gerda. Look at Gerda. Oh, Hi, Gerda. Gerda. Hey, Gerda. Gerda. How are you tonight? I'm okay. Fine. Thank you, Cosmolina. Oh, good you get good stuff. My father, thank you. Brother Peter, good stuff. Thank you. Brother George. Father Bill. Hi, hey. Father. Brother Peter. Father Bill, when you're saying that um, 
you know, the, uh, the, dur the exile during the time of Ezekiel, you know, they were singing praises, reading scripture and homilies. That was basically what we were saying. It was the transition to the New Testament, right? That's correct. So it was just there a way of gonna worshiping. Be, there's going to have to be um, 400 years of transition called intertestamental. What's that? What was that? Transition? Intertestamental time. Lee, you didn't change spots with Patty, so please switch. Uh, all right. So, um, good stuff? Yes. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. We're not going to be here, Father, for what Ms. Kathy, you know this? is rapture. Lisa. The rapture is not a Catholic thought. No, I know that, but what they think it is, we're not going to be here for that. Or for anything else that they're thinking about. But you better get Gerda ready and get her out of town as quick as possible. Oh, please. Oh, the I have a question. I have a question. Um, you said to pray to Our Lady of Sorrows. Is there any specific reason for that? Yes, because of all the sorrows we're in. Okay. Brother Peter, are you getting this? Yeah, Father Bill, going back to the 490, you were saying that uh, the 490 into the future from the point at at the end of the exile? Yeah. You talk about it, the it 70 starts, weeks. It starts to the time of Jesus coming into Jerusalem. We talked a lot about that last week. Right. And now all this time has passed. And the last part is coming into the seven years of tribulation. After the 490 in the future. Yeah. So that'll, following the that'll conclude it. Yep. I think we're on the verge. Of the seven year tribulation. I'm hoping not, Peggy. I'm hoping <laughs> Jesus will come and take me home. I think I have new year stronger than I am. He's so blessed, Father. <laughs> Yes, yeah. yes. Cause, what you doing? Kathy has Brother John, where are the kids? In the pool. In bed. In bed. Father Bell, Bishop Sheen's prophecy is going to come true where the Muslim nation is going to be converted through Our Lady of Fatima. Right. And he mentions since Fatima was one of Muhammad's favorite daughters. I'll find the video for you. Okay. So, so, so Father Bill, if we're going to have this thousand years of, of peace and tranquility, does that imply that the second coming happens after the thousand years? Yeah. It does. It, with, I gave you the seven signs, right? And one of the uh, six and seven is the thousand year reign. You get all this, sister? And then, Father, after after the, the thousand-year reign, after the thousand-year reign, isn't that when the tribulation, right? The seven. Then, then he'll be loose. That's and seven. Out comes Revelation 19. Mm -hmm. Jesus will say, "That's enough," and he'll be thrown into the lake of fire. Right? Mentioned. Mentioned. Uh, Gog is mentioned in Revelation 20. Um, and then the era of peace. The era of peace, Miss Kathy, is probably the thousand year reign. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And, yeah. and logically speaking, the second coming of Christ would occur after the thousand year reign. That's right. Or a period of long term peace. What is after That's Satan right. is chained and bound? That's right. Yeah, but Father Brother so David, what does the peace mean, though? You mean without war? Peace there'll be no person. war. There'll be there'll be uh, there'll be people alive in the spirit and living their call. The well, what you said like earlier anymore. You said we'll be living as we're destined to live, true to ourselves. We're, we're living the way we should have always been when we're fully right. redeemed. We right. all do not live fully redeemed yet. I look at Katie and I said, "Does that look like a fully redeemed person?" <laughs> So, Father Bill, the thousand year reign, is it really a thousand years? Because it says in the scripture, in Protestantism, day, they take they, it literally a thousand years. Long time. In Catholic thought, it's, a, it's from St. Augustine. 
Um, if you were saying Augustine in the thousand years, if you want to go online tonight, it's called Chileanism. And Chile is a word for uh, a thousand years. You can read his thoughts on it. Oh. I have a question. Ms. Cheryl. Something doesn't make sense. Okay, so, so you said that not everybody's going to be converted during that time, though. No, there will still be people. Uh, that, that you still have a free choice to come to God. Okay. There are still people living in their damnable pride. So they can still <laughs> sin. There will, there will be conversions during that time. Okay. Because when you go to church during that time, you will look up at church and you will see magnificent you know how people have said to me, I saw Mary, I saw this. You will go to church and you will see unbelievable visions in church. You will want to go to church early. And the confession lines are supposed to be very, very long. Yes, Miss Kathy. Because the and I believe it because if you if you have that um illumination and you see remember that's Catholic piety. Okay, go ahead. Illumination. But that's what's predicted to occur in the autumn. That's Catholic piety. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, so even Catholic if piety. Catholic piety, and you see yourself for who you really are, and you see your sins, the only way really back is to God, unless your pride blocks you. Right. You know what? Um, I, I loved the readings for this morning in Holy Mass. And I love the one from Kings and Elijah and how um, Eli how Elijah was sent to the Arapath and how the widow <coughs> had very little food left, was able to supply food for a year and that her oil and her flour never emptied. That's how I think the Lord's going to take care of us. Yeah. So you're not going to need the chip because he'll take care of us. Whatever Brother John, Monique, Mama from heaven. Where is Monique? Monique's with the kids, doing her motherly duty. Brother John, more babies. Where's the part about the father? Father, not, not with what's coming down the road, Father Bill. More babies, Brother John. Father, I have a question. What is your question? Um, Patty, time to switch seats, please. Go ahead. <laughs> Father, at, at this time, no, even though we know the signs at a time, aren't we, while we're kept in the world, aren't we still supposed to be salt and light? And Keep still, going. And the still governor be, just released you. Go get it. And still be bringing people into the into to the Lord. And, and I think yeah, look at Patty's friends. <laughs> well, yes. Brother Vincent, did you understand this stuff? Hey, Father Bill, I see a vet's yes. waving for a question. <laughs> a vet's trying to a vet, a vet's trying to ask a question, Father Bill. Hey, vet, what's your question? So, during the thousand-year reign, does the world turn to evil again towards the end for the second coming? No, during the thousand-year reign, it'll be a phenomenal time when believers or the church will be the church. You will see unbelievable things during that time. The miracles, the signs, and the wonders will be incredible. You have a two. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind living that time. No. Father Bill, is that the same thing as a thousand years of peace? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You have a two CD set on this. There it is. Father, Father Bill. Miss Vicky. Uh, Father Bill, why does the devil have to be let loose? Why couldn't he just be thrown in the abyss? Why does he come back? He's let loose, and then the battle of Armageddon, the ultimate comes, where Jesus is going to say, enough, into the lake of fire. Okay. Goodness. I don't know why he's let go again. <laughs> because he's in Illinois right now. Uh -huh. I believe, oh, believe I believe that. He's in your government, sister. No. Yeah. But he was, and he walks around Kathy's house in Naperville. No, he doesn't. Not in my house. Uh, uh, around it. Not in my house, because I, I got, said around it. I got Saint Benedict medals all over this place because he likes, he likes, he likes Vincent's house a lot. But 
Padre, <laughs> the devil was given 100 years, right? The devil was the given 100 years. Yeah. Yes, and I think the 100 years are coming to an end. No, they can't. And that's why we're seeing all this, yes. all this yes. calamity. Yes. And actually, I read 10 to 15 years ago that when the church starts praying the St. Michael's Prayer after each Holy Mass. Well, we do. Yeah, but we didn't for a long time, but that when we start doing that, we're closer to that time. We do here. Now, yeah. Father, in your church, but not all churches. Now, not the other churches. No, no. no. And the homily is, you cannot even hear the homilies are bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Brother Peter. Yeah, Father Bill. So, so then, uh, so then after that, uh, that, that, that's, I, I joined late tonight. Did you cover that last, that last, um, last week? Last we repeated year? everything and we finished the Bill. Yep. Um, well, in, I've been traveling around on my computer to masses every day and going to different states and different churches, and almost every one of them prayed the um, St. Michael prayer. Great. And where I live, they play, pray the St. No, Michael yep. prayer after all the masses. That's great. Um, That's great. Nothing. nothing. But I also started to talk to my daughter about these things. And she said, she said, how do you sleep at night knowing all this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, because of this, I sleep at night. Yeah. And, and I sleep very well. And I said, because if you understood it and you were living the right way, you That's would exactly. be fine. So, yeah. so you know, some people got a little bit galooks and galooks. Is there anything better to tell them? The truth will set us free. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother George, we are feeding the uh, the poor today, so thank you. Praise God. Now and forever. forever. Now and forever. There was Praise uh, the Lord. Uh, there was a Georgia state trooper with the riots, and they told uh, people told him he had to kneel. And he said, I only kneel to one person, and that's my Lord. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that's great. I read that. Yeah. yeah. Where's my Larry? Is there a good Bible, sister? Anybody else? No. When you're coming back over for meatballs and spaghetti. Hey. Uh, Brother John, I'm on my way. Amen. Hey. Sister Marie. Hey, how are you, doing? you, John? Good to oh, see you. You're looking God. great. Mm -hmm. You're looking great. Amen. Amen. You too. All been. my love to you and Larry. Sorry. Thank you so much, John. God Natalie, you are laughing. Jacqueline, is this good stuff? Excellent, Father. Excellent. Yeah, Ramon. Lisa, are you getting your family ready? <laughs> Did Michael go to bed already? Uh, Peggy wants to know yeah. how he's feeling. No, I think she's probably not already. Yeah. How Mike's feeling? Everyone. Look, I need a haircut. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good night. I have to go. Have to put no vemos. Good night. God bless. Nos vemos. What is this? Brother Peter. Oh, Bill, one last question. How many yes. Christians end, end up going to Pella from uh, from Jerusalem? Um, Do you know? Was that recorded? Josephus or something? A lot of them. They said, we're getting out. Don't go near Jerusalem. It would be um, Jerusalem was destroyed in 70. 
So how far was Pella they went from? Up, then they went up to Masada in the desert. Pella south, it's right? About twenty like miles. Jerusalem, Pella. Pella would be yeah. Pella would be south, like south east. Right. Further than um, yeah. Tako Tokoya. Yeah, they would go probably into the country of Jordan. Mm, okay. And they got out of Woodridge and everything else. Yeah, but then they would. You figured they would have established a oh. Christian country there, right? Or yeah, Christian presence. Yeah. And they went to Fair Gardens and everything else. Mm -hmm. Father Bill, can we have a blessing? I gave you one. <laughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May you know you're an Abba Father's hands. May no harm ever come to you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. 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 Have a good night. Praise yeah. His holy name. Thank you, Father. Thank good you. Stuff. Thank good you, night, Father. all. Thank you. Bye, Patty and Lee. Bye, Lisa. Bye, Patty Lee. Hey, Patty Lee. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Okay. Good night. Um, could hey, you Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Ode. Vince, good night, Lisa, Lisa. Good night. Good night, Vince. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Um, um, Father, you going to give us the code for your talk in the UN? He gave it. Is, is he there? No, he's disappeared. He gave oh. it. Do you Where want it? it? I can give it to you.